Tracks is sponsored by Polaris, think outside. Can-Am, time for some off-road living. And by Yamaha, revs your heart. As most of you know, I spent pretty much my entire life around off-road vehicles. The first time I took a ride in a snowmobile, I was just six months old, and I got my first ATV when I was two. This is due entirely to the love my dad, Mark, had and still has for off-road riding of all kinds. His passion was passed on to me and became my passion. It was a family thing too. Mom rode, and obviously AJ was just as into it as I was. Well, you can truly say that off-roading has been in uh, kind of our DNA and in, uh, in the Lester family. I got bitten by the uh, dirt bike bug when I was about 16 or 17 years old and started uh, riding motocross and racing motocross and doing off-road in the summertime. So that was kind of where it started for me. Barb and I, uh, after we were married, uh, had two boys and you know who they are, Luke and AJ. It just became like a natural thing that when they were big enough, I wanted them to experience off-roading. And so uh, they both started off with uh, gas-powered uh, Suzuki and Yamaha three-wheelers and then four-wheelers, and it took off from there. And our recreation, uh, while some families might have done hockey and other sports, we did off-roading, that's what we did together. And uh, we worked on the bikes together. And as the kids got older, we got, you know, uh, tricker equipment and better stuff. And, uh, and then the avenue opened for snowmobiling and uh, we got involved in winter off-road on snowmobiles. So then it became 12 months of the year. We were involved, busy uh, doing off-roading and then racing came. So it was a natural progression. Off-roading is, uh, is in our DNA and it most certainly is in Luke and AJ's DNA. Every night when the kids came home from school, we'd be out riding if it was in, uh, you know, if it was in May we were out riding ATVs side-by-sides and dirt bikes, and if it was in February, we were uh, on the snow riding snowmobiles and uh, sort of five to seven days a week. I mean, my boys have logged a lot of miles, and so have I, uh, riding together. And I'll tell you, you can't beat that bond of friendship and, and uh, fun and good times that you can with off-roading. It's, it's great to teach your kids responsibility great to teach them how to operate these vehicles and to look after them. They learn a lot of really great life lessons uh, surrounding their involvement in off-roading. And as time went on, this passion grew. I mean, what kind of kid wouldn't want to jump on an ATV or a dirt bike and grab a handful of throttle every weekend? What I think is interesting about my childhood is that while neither AJ nor myself played team sports, we still developed a very strong sense of sportsmanship and learned so much about respect, responsibility, and self-control. Our family's passion for off-road riding in general eventually led to AJ and I entering our first snowcross races when we were still pretty young. One weekend of racing to just try it out led to a nearly decade-long career for both of us that culminated with the semi-pro national championship for AJ and a pro national championship for me. We definitely found success in racing, but it was so much more than that. Racing for us was always a family affair. We packed the whole family into the motorhome each weekend and travel all over the country together. I would guess that we probably spent more quality time together as a family in just one winter than most families do in a lifetime. All of this eventually led to the whole family working together, publishing magazines and making TV shows. Most people are blown away that we can work together as a family and not want to kill each other. To that I say, try being crammed into a motorhome together for 10 years while dealing with all of the ups and downs of competing at the top levels of your sport. If your family can survive that, working together is a piece of cake. After our racing careers ended, AJ and I went back to enjoying recreational off-road riding, but as it does, time marched on, and it wasn't long before we had kids of our own running around. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by MBRP Performance Exhaust, built for the Victory Lab. Having a dad who took the time to help grow my passion for motorsports and seeing how riding off-road had brought our family together in such a meaningful way, 
I knew from the first time I laid eyes on my oldest daughter, Callie, I was gonna follow his example and get my kids into it as well. The difference between dad getting AJ and I into off-road riding and me getting my kids into it is that he had two boys and I have two girls. In the beginning, this difference was apparent in two ways. First, if my girls were gonna ride their ABTs, as they called them at the time, they had to be pink. And second, riding confidence came at a much slower pace. The second one was really a blessing in disguise. When AJ and I were riding together when we were young, there was always some kind of carnage. We were tough and always got right back on, mind you, but careful was not the word I'd use to describe either of us. My girls, though, were very careful and thoughtful as they learned to ride. It was great knowing they wouldn't try anything they weren't confident they could handle. Now that my girls are older and way more confident, riding together with them has become a lot easier to do and way more fun. The ATVs they ride are bigger now and in turn way more capable, faster and more stable. The distances we can go has increased significantly and the lessons and instructions I give are absorbed much more quickly. The main thing that's exactly the same between me and my girls and dad and his boys as we learn to ride off road is what it means to each of us though. I love having independence when I'm riding and I just feel like super free and just out there. Riding with my dad means like, it just means a lot to me I think. It's something that he really likes and I really like, so I think that's I think that's a good one. It's a moment that I will remember and it's fun. Stops, he looks behind us and he gives us like a hand. And before we start writing, he just makes sure we don't have any more questions or he like talks to us about how the vehicle works sometimes and if we have any questions about that. When my dad rode with um, his dad, he tells me about it all the time. And I just think that it's really cool that I'm growing up to spend those times with my dad too. Riding off road is something that our family's always done. And personally, I like it, Alice likes it. Yeah. And I think that hopefully we can do it forever until we can't ride. For me, riding off road with my girls brings an indescribable sense of joy and pride. Seeing them develop the same passions and skills that I did at their age is fascinating. It also brings a strong sense of nostalgia, and it's hard not to get emotional when I realize that what I'm feeling as I watch them ride is exactly the same as what my dad felt watching us ride so many years ago. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Princess Auto. Make it work. I've been having some great conversations with all of you on our social media pages lately, but one comment that keeps popping up is about the lack of ATVs you're seeing on the show this season. And you gotta understand, this isn't because we're not trying to get units to evaluate or because we don't like ATVs. It's just that at this time, the availability of units to test is incredibly limited. Go to any dealership and you'll be hard pressed to find any new ATVs in the showroom floor as they're sold out to the bare walls. We think this is because compared to a side-by-side, -side, an ATV is the most affordable way to get into or stay in four-wheeled off-road. We were able to get our hands on two Yamaha products that have very similar DNA. The Raptor and the RMX Sport are sort of the perfect blend between a trail and a sport machine. Obviously very different, but very well-built, incredibly fun machines that I have had a blast evaluating. So let's take a look at these machines and compare their differences for someone getting into the sport. This isn't gonna be a shootout because that would be silly, but trust me, I have a point, so stick with me. The RMAX Sport is the newest model in the Wolverine RMAX line, featuring Yamaha's 999cc parallel twin, an Ultramatic CVT, dial-controlled on-command four-wheel drive, two-wheel drive, 
and locking diff, and selectable sport, trail, and crawl modes. Plus, this unit features Fox 2.0 piggybacks with high and low speed compression and preload adjustability, and 30-inch GBC TerraMaster tires wrapped around 14-inch beadlock wheels. The Sport rides smooth as silk over the roughest trails and can handle just about any conditions you can throw at it. Put it in two-wheel drive in sport mode, you can get it a little sideways as you're blasting down the trails. And when there's work to be done, it's got a dumping cargo box with a tailgate and a 600-pound capacity. So, fill it up with dirt, wood, or feed, or throw all your gear in it, and it's ready for just about any adventure you can throw at it. Obviously, there's a ton of appeal to having a side-by-side. -side. The biggest probably being that you can either bring a passenger along for the ride, or have just as much fun riding solo. Although it'll go through just about anything, you might be limited by its 66 inch width as to where you can ride. And getting to other riding areas will require a trailer, which is another expense. But here's the biggest drawback to buying a side-by-side, -side, price. We've recently seen side-by-sides hit the market that cost more than 40 grand US. That's more than 50 grand Canadian. It's crazy, but what's even crazier is they're selling every single one. Now, not every side-by-side -side costs that much, and there's more affordable vehicles in everyone's lineup. This RMX costs about 26 US, which I personally feel is still a bit high, especially for someone just getting into the sport, which is why I want to highlight this next machine. Not only is the Raptor 700R arguably the coolest looking off-road vehicle on the market today, it's totally unique. There's literally nothing else like it offered by any other manufacturer, putting it in a class all its own. And its pure sport DNA makes it one of the funnest, most exhilarating vehicles ever built. The Raptor's pure sport to its core, and it's just as comfortable on the trail as it is on the track. It features a 686cc single, five-speed manual transmission, solid rear axle, and it even has a flipping reverse. It's a little finicky at times, but I mean, it's reverse on a pure sport, that's awesome. It's also small enough to throw in the back of your pickup truck if you wanna take it to the track or just go explore new trails further away from your house. You can look at the manual clutch as either a positive or a negative. Personally, I love it. But for someone new getting into the sport, there is a learning curve to mastering a hand clutch and a foot shifter while you're ripping down trails. Truthfully, if you're laying down money for a Raptor, you've probably got some experience with a clutch. And if you're one of those millennial types who's scared off by a manual shifter, put down the avocado toast, get out of your mom's basement and go learn. One of the drawbacks of the Raptor is its ground clearance. At about six inches under the rear swing arm, you could be limited to the trails you're gonna take it on. Are you gonna take it through skeg? No. Are you gonna tackle rocky, rutted out black diamond trails with huge mud holes with it? I mean, I probably wouldn't, but I've watched enough YouTube to know that nothing's gonna stop you guys, so who am I to tell you how to ride your ATV? The other thing that's so awesome about the Raptor is how it connects the rider to the trail. And I think that's something we've lost to some degree after testing so many side-by-sides. On the Raptor, it's just you and the machine. Get your cheeks off the seat in the corner and use your body to manipulate the ATV to make it do what you want it to. It's about quickly keeping track of your gears while choosing the best line in front of you, while at the same time, avoiding rocks and ruts in the trail. It requires laser sharp focus and some skill, but I found that getting back on the Raptor after two seasons has made me a better, more attentive rider altogether. There's a connection you feel on the Raptor that you just don't get when you're buckled into a side-by-side. Like I mentioned earlier, the most appealing thing about a Raptor, besides its cool factor, is its price. For less than 10 grand US, which is about $1,500 less than a Grizzly, mind you, you can have this big board, dual sport monster of a machine that'll literally make you a better rider. And when you're ready to trade up to a side-by-side, -side, it's a Yamaha, and they hold their value really well. Personally though, I'm thinking most guys would probably hold on to the Raptor too, because it's priced affordably enough that it's not gonna break the bank, and it'll still be a ton of fun to get out on when you wanna break from your side-by-side. -side. And hey, let's hope the manufacturers are paying attention to this sudden spike in demand for ATVs, 
and maybe we'll see an increase in production. Or better yet, maybe we'll see all the manufacturers bring back Pure Sport ATVs. Now that's a comeback I can get behind. Dirt Tracks has been sponsored by Hercules Tire. Ride on our strength. Tire Jet. Full tire protection and permanent seal. And by Mad Ramps. Leave the trailer and go. The word Fugelmann may catch you a little bit off guard, but that's just the thing. In German, Fugelmann is actually a military term that means to demonstrate or show the rest how it's done. So while at first I didn't really get it, now I do and I realize that Segway is actually saying a whole lot to their competition just by their name alone. The Fugelmann is available in two trims, the UT10E and the UT10X. Today I'm testing the X model and it gets you upgrades like the cool center stack screen the 4,500 pound pre-wired winch, as well as color match beadlock rims. In Canada, you'll also get an 18 month warranty on all Fugelmans, as well as the nice windshield on the X package. The nice thing is no matter which Fugelman you choose, you get the same 105 horsepower performance. And in this class, that's some stout power. Well, we don't have a whole lot of background info on the actual power plant in the Fugelman. I do know one thing. It's the exact same power and exact same specs as the motor in the villain. That means a 1,000cc dual overhead cam twin. And like I said, it pumps out 105 horsepower. And let me tell you, this thing hauls. It's responsive, it's snappy, and it feels as good as any other competition in this class. Which class, you might ask? Well, I see the Fugelman hitting square in the sport rec category. It's not full utility, it's not pure sport. It'll haul a load of wood, dump it off at the cabin with the tilting dump box, and then head out for a sporty blast down the trail and do it all again tomorrow. Competition for the Fugelman would be the Polaris General, the Can-Am Commander, and the Yamaha R-Max. Stiff competition, to say the least. Now the sportiness of the Fugelman shouldn't make you think that it's not capable of work because the actual capacities of this rig are very respectable. 1,500 pounds of payload, a 1,000 pound box capacity, and towing from its included two inch hitch receiver rated at 2,500 pounds are all in line with many of its competition. The 4,500 pound factory equipped winch will get you out of any situation you might find yourself or your friends in, and the beefy beadlocks, sturdy front mini stinger style bumper, and perimeter roll bar with full lower cage exposed steel frame gives you the feeling that this thing was built for longevity. While even the X package comes with just a standard steel body hydraulic shock, it still rides very good, it's respectable. But this is one area where I believe that the X package could up the game much like its competition and use an aluminum reservoir or piggyback shock. Being said, the 11 inches of travel up front and 10.60 back combine together to deliver a very pleasing ride even when you up the speed and really let those 105 horses out. The chassis is stable at higher speeds and through tight twisty corners. The sway bar keeps it level and confident and the 12.6 inches of ground clearance lets you cruise over anything that you might find mid-trail and linked to the arched A-arms gives you confidence that you can clear those objects and the four-wheel disc brakes coupled with the three-mode smart electric power steering that's adjustable via your smartphone gives you the freedom to tune the amount of input you feel while stopping you efficiently and with authority. From the interior, you're gonna instantly notice that the Segway engineers know a thing or two about building quality interiors. Comfort here is not second thought. From proper density seat foam to the right non-slip material on the seats and even a thick headrest so that you don't knock your helmet on the roll bar, the Fugelman is very comfortable. The steering wheel is fully adjustable and the actual diameter of the wheel is comfortable and sporty. The parking brake is something that I've never seen before and while quite large, does remind you that it's on or off. From a styling department, the Fugelman is very sporty. It's got a commanding look and the fit and finish as well as tight lines don't just look as good as its competition, it ups the game from quite a few. Another area it ups the game, technology inside the cockpit. Right from the turn of the key, the dual full LED displays work in harmony and look absolutely nothing short of impressive. I mean, this is the Tesla of side-by-side -side interiors. 
The huge 10.4 inch center stack touchscreen gives you hands-on access to anything that you can imagine. From live vehicle stats to GPS mapping and the added inclusion of the Segway Power Sports app from your phone on every Segway means that you can program your phone to be your key as well as all kinds of cool alerts and functions. Even down to having the vehicle send out an alert if it senses that it's moved at night or rolled over during a ride. The upgraded X package center screen also comes with a stereo built in that'll work with headset communicators like Cardo systems. And behind the headrest speaker systems from Segway will also be available very soon. And remember, if you're just looking to get the job done and you really don't have a need for the huge center screen and all the benefits it brings, the UT10e is every bit as capable. With this level of performance and integrated technology, Segway is treating buyers much more like the automotive industry and in some ways leading the way. But then again, isn't that what the word Fugelman is all about?